This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome today to the worship and the fellowship of Delisle Community Chapel. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you have joined us online from your home or wherever you are, God is with you. God is with each one of us and God is among us and he wants to do something in our lives today to make us better people than we were before we came. Let's go to the psalm today. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 91 and I will read it in its entirety. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Shall we pray? Father God, we honor you today. We hold you in the highest esteem. All praise and worship is due to you. Grant that those who worship you today may do so in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now, let's enjoy once more the songs of Christmas. When uh, the Apostle Paul, the uh, lead pastor, if you will, wrote a letter to a younger pastor, Timothy, he told him to be careful not to neglect the public reading of Scripture. And that's a good word for all of us. We give a priority to reading God's Word here at DCC because it is that when the Spirit of God applies the Word of God to our lives, that we find power to live life as it should be lived. Today I want to read from the prophets, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 13. But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you. I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. 
Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the people assemble. Which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who reverses it? And then from... The epistle of Romans, we read verses 28 to 39. For we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who then shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And finally, from the Gospel, I read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you? that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of our Lord. We pray. Father God, we ask that you would apply your word to our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can count on the things that you want us to know for sure. 
as we go into the year 2021. We pray through Jesus. Amen. I know that for many people, and for many of you, 2020 has been a tough year. It hasn't been all bad. In fact, uh, it hasn't been bad for everyone. But many people have had a tough year in 2020. Of course, 2020 will always be known as the year of COVID-19, the coronavirus that came, well, to our attention in a big way in March and has been with us now for 10 months, 10 months. And uh, it will continue, it looks like, into the new year for some time. Why is it that when trouble comes, of any kind, that it is so easy to believe that God has abandoned us? To think, he doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't listen when I pray. None of us knows what 2021 will bring. There may be other challenges that are completely unseen at this time. And for sure, we believe that there will also be unknown joys. As we go into 2021, I cannot predict for you what is going to happen. But there are some things that we can know and believe with confidence. So today I want to talk to you about Things you can count on for sure in 2021. Is that all right? Things you can count on for sure in 2021. The first thing that you can count on for sure. His presence is watching over me. Each of you can say that and affirm it. His presence, God's presence is watching over me. Now we can learn a great deal about God by understanding the names by which he identifies himself. Many of you know that God's name is Yahweh. Yahweh. That means I am. I am. What's in a name? Well, Shakespeare asked the question, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet as if the name that we give to the rose is not significant. But when it comes to God, his name is very significant. In fact, he says, I will not hold the person guiltless who uses my name in vain. So we understand that God's primary name is Yahweh, but did you know that he also adds other words, other names to the name Yahweh to help us understand more of who he is and what he is like? Often in scripture, a second name is added. And today I want to share three of these names with you. One name, by which God is known, is Yahweh Shama. Yahweh Shama. That means the Lord who is there. The New Testament equivalent of that would be Emmanuel. God with us. No matter what happens in 2021, there is something you can count on for sure. God will always be there with you. According to the uh, Bible app that you can use on your computer, the most searched, read, and bookmarked verse in the Bible in 2020 was Isaiah 41.10, which says, So do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It's good to know that we are living under divine protection. Nothing can happen to us that our Father God does not allow. Psalm 91, which we read at the beginning of the service, verses 14 and 15 says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God's presence with us means God's protection over us. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6 says, God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Over and over, the Bible tells us, do not fear. How are you doing with that one? I think of a story that was shared by my friend Doug. Years ago, when the family was young, they lived in Saskatoon. They had three boys. When the second boy was old enough that they thought he could live in the basement downstairs. They allowed him to move down. But uh, within the first few evenings that he was on his own in a bedroom downstairs, there was a terrific lightning storm. The, the lightning flashed repeatedly. The thunder was cracking. It seemed as if the house was shaking. And uh, the young lad became afraid. And he called upstairs and he said, I need someone down here with me. And uh, mom and dad, who were already in bed, were not inclined to get back uh, out of bed and, and go downstairs. Uh, so they, they just told him, go back to sleep, you'll be okay. And he hollered, I need somebody here with me. And dad, dad was so sharp. He said, Jesus is there with you. God is with you. And the young fellow hollered back up and said, I need somebody with skin on. <laughs> but the fact is, Jesus is God with skin on. He came into this world born as a baby to be one of us. And this is the Jesus who says to us, I am with you. Do not be afraid. Brother Lawrence, who wrote a book centuries ago, was known for practicing the presence of God. We never know what a day will bring, let alone a whole year that lies ahead of us. Make it a habit to begin your day with an awareness of the presence of God. Most mornings at our home, I'm the first one out of bed, and most mornings, pretty much the first thing I do is uh, head for that espresso coffee maker that my wife gave me for Father's Day. And uh, it's very fast. Espresso does mean fast in Italian. You know that, right? So I uh, make a... Uh, a shot, a double shot of espresso, and I add a little water to make it into an Americano, and I carry that into the front room, and I sit down there with a devotional book, which starts with scripture, and I spend some time having a coffee with Jesus, just making myself aware of the presence of God right now, today, at the beginning of my day. I came across a prayer by Richard Foster, and I thought, I can relate. To that. Listen to this prayer. He prayed, somehow, Jesus, I feel like praying with a cup of coffee in my hands. I guess the warmth of the cup settles me and speaks of the warmth of your love. I hold the cup against my cheek 
and listen, hushed and still. I blow on the coffee and drink. O oh, Spirit of God, blow across my little life and let me drink in your great life. Practice the presence of Jesus in your life. The second thing that you can know for sure in 2021 is this. His purpose is working things out for me. His purpose is working things out for me. You can affirm that and know it for sure if you have made Jesus your Lord. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things, heavy on the all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now I want to introduce you to another of the names by which God calls himself. He calls himself Yahweh Roe, and that means the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. David knew the reality of that when he wrote the psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths that are right for me, in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Isn't that a great thing to know that he is our shepherd? He leads us. He guides us. The Bible says that the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. Sometimes we look at the situation and we say, how in the world will this ever work out? And then we remember that God said that in all things, he works for the good of those who love him. So just keep on loving and trusting knowing that God will work things out for your good. He will lead you into the unknown future. I love the quote from David Livingstone, the famous pioneer missionary to Africa, who said, I will go anywhere provided it is forward. Isn't that great? You know, I remember the night that Ruth and I prayed together, we knew that uh, God was calling us back into full-time church ministry, but we had no idea where that was going to be. And we prayed, and we said, God, anywhere, anywhere between Africa and Alaska, we'll be fine. What we meant by that was anywhere in the world, really. We ended up here in Delisle, closer to Alaska than to Africa. But you can go anywhere, and you can go through anything when you know that God is leading and guiding you. That doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. Life isn't always easy. Sometimes it gets real bad. And that's when I'm glad for promises in God's word like this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And then, I love Jeremiah 29, 11. I told you earlier about the most popular verse in the Bible app in 2020? Well, in 2019, it was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope 
and a future. The third thing that you can know for sure as you go into 2021 is this. His place is waiting for me. His place is waiting for me. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is speaking here. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Here is another name by which God calls himself. Yahweh Shalom. The Lord is my peace. I have peace, knowing that my eternal destiny is life with God and all my believing friends in the place that he has prepared for me. In the book of Genesis, we read about a man named Enoch. Do you remember Enoch? What it says of Enoch is so profound. It says, Enoch walked with God, and Enoch was not for God took him. In other words, Enoch was one of only two people that we know of in the Bible who was taken into the presence of God without having to experience death. The other being Elijah, remember, who was caught up in a chariot of fire in a whirlwind. I uh, heard about a child who had uh, gone after church, uh, gone back home after junior church, and uh, mom and dad asked him you know, what he had uh, heard about in junior church that day, and he said, well, we, we talked about Enoch. And uh, dad said, well, what did, you, what did you learn about Enoch? And the child explained it this way. He said, Enoch used to go for walks with God. One day they walked further than usual, and so God said to Enoch, it's closer to my place than yours. Why don't you just come home with me? <laughs> I love that, you know. Is that, I mean, it's, it's great, but, but what a profound insight, because in a sense, that's what God says to all of us who are his children. You know, as we walk with God, the day will come when he will say, why don't you just come home with me? And because we have that absolute assurance for our eternity, we have peace for the present. What a powerful, powerful thing. And so, for review, there are these three things that we can count on for sure as we enter the new year. One, his presence is watching over me. Two, his purpose is working things out for me. And three, his place is waiting for me. If you have trouble believing those things, I want to encourage you to pray. Pray honestly. Tell God about your struggle. Ask him to reveal himself to you. And if there is any unconfessed sin in your life, admit it to God. Repent of it. Because sometimes that lack of assurance stems from unconfessed sin, which breaks our fellowship with God. Get with other believers who will listen and encourage you in your faith. If you are a part 
of a local church. And all of us should be a part of a local church. The faith of others will reignite your own faith. Ruth and I moved into a, uh, a house a couple of years ago now here in Delisle. The house uh, had a wood-burning fireplace in the basement. We were given to understand that the people from whom we purchased the home had never, ever used that fireplace. And they had lived there for 10 years. So we knew that it was well over a decade since that fireplace had been used. And we were a little concerned about lighting a fire in there, not knowing for sure if there might have been a buildup in the chimney or something that would cause it to be a, a danger. So we, we didn't use it until this year as Christmas drew close. We thought, sure, it would be nice to have a fireplace. And so we checked it out as best we could. And we experimented a little. And you know we lit a torch. And we sort of lifted up the chimney to see if it would draw. We got one of those uh, logs that you burn to clear out the creosote in a wood-burning fireplace. And, and good news, it works great. And uh, we've had a fire almost every evening lately. Um, really enjoying it. But one thing we've noticed, um, you know, once the fire gets going, you know, you put on one bigger log and, and it burns, burns real well, but only as long as it's got some other logs around it. When there's just one log, unless it's one of those artificial type logs, it doesn't burn well alone. One by itself tends to go out. But when it is put together with others, it reignites and burns beautifully. And so it is with us. If you Try to be a lone ranger Christian. Your faith may flicker and flame out. But as you gather together with other believers, you will find your faith reignited. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's so important that we worship, that we praise, that we sing, that we fellowship together. And then read the Word, the Bible. That is God's Word to us. The Bible is not just a collection of writings about God. It is writings inspired by God in which he reveals himself to us. Read the Bible. Every day, whether it's just a little bit or whether it's more, get into your Bible each day and you will find that it strengthens your faith. It will teach you, train you, equip you, and prepare you. And you will believe more than ever before that his presence is watching over you. His purpose is working things out for you and his place is waiting for you. We pray. God, only you know the future. But we know you. And far more amazing even than that, you know us. You've called each of us by name. You know everything about us. You know all the wrong things we've done. You know what we have done and what we've been like. And you love us just the same. You sent Jesus to be our Savior. He came as a baby at Christmas. But he became a man who taught and healed and loved as no one else has ever done. And then he died on a cross to take the punishment that we deserved so that when we place our faith in him, confessing our sins, your spirit comes into our life and we are born again. We become the persons for which 
we were created in the first place. A part of your forever family. Today, God, thank you for the encouragement of your word. Thank you that your presence is watching over me. Your purpose is working things out for me. And you have a place waiting for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Lord, Yahweh, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you.